Next is uh, Andy Palmer. Now he is a uh, CEO of Vertica, serial entrepreneur who's been collaborating with Mike on Mike's various startups here in New England uh, for the last about 10 years or so. Can I plug in? Yes, you got to take this. I've just got one slide. That's it? That's it. That's bold. I know, exactly. <laughs> I spent all morning digging this out of my, uh, the depths of my PowerPoint. Um, the cool thing about the Vertica two by two matrix is that it's attacking everyone else. It's not just happy to be up there in the upper right, that it's actually out there actively attacking everything else. This is a little aggressive. I don't think we actually used this one when it came to, to our marketing. Um, so uh, this, is, uh, this is really emotional. My wife kept asking me if I was going to cry when I uh, got up here. And I said, well, I'd be the only one. There's a lot of laughing going on. But, um, but this one means a lot to me. So um, uh, I'm going to give it a shot. So first, uh, there's this really great quote by Winston Churchill. I sure, I'm sure you've all heard it. Uh, you make a living by what you get. You make a life by what you give. And um, uh, Mike has truly made a great life. Um, he's given so much to all of us that are in this room and uh, many, many more people that are, that are not actually here today, um, but I'm sure would like to be. And for me, as a, as a business person and a sort of a former uh, a software engineer, um, you know, I'm surrounded by people every single day who think about business and the business of software uh, as being about money. And um, the amazing thing about Mike is that it's never about money. Um, the money is a tool. It's in one piece of, of, of the pie. Um, but it really isn't what primarily uh, motivates him. And that's, uh, that's pretty incredible. Um, my first experience, uh, or the first time I was uh, touched by Mike, um, was, was, was back in the mid-1980s. <laughs> when I was a young college boy. <laughs> I, I was, yes, group groping was involved. No, um, I, was, uh, I was an intern at a com small company in Chicago, small family business. We were building a, a system to automate our, our quoting and sales configuration. And we had picked this database system called Double Helix that was the first database system for the Mac. It was a pretty good one, actually, um, uh, back in the day, even though it was a little bit simple. And um, uh, we, you know, I spent a good chunk of uh, the summer, three, four months, uh, trying to, to get this thing to work in Double Helix. And uh, the whole time I was doing it, I was programming on a little Mac sitting next to the computer room where we had a PDP-11. And um, I finally got to the end of this thing, and it just didn't work. Uh, and so I had to, to f figure out a different plan. And um, uh, after doing a little reading, the only plan I could come with was to uh, actually get Ingress running on the PDP-11, uh, re-implement everything I had built on this uh, little hack of a database called Double Helix in Ingress, and actually make it work. Um, and I did all that in a matter of uh, two and a half or three weeks. And so, you know, I think that my, my experience, um, uh, you, know, and, uh, you know, how Mike influenced me is um, how many, many people have been influenced by Ingress or Postgres or Vertica or many of these other systems. If you use systems that Mike Stonebreaker has uh, been involved in designing and building, um, it's almost always a good bet. Um, it really, uh, the discipline and the, the effort that goes into figuring out um, how to make database systems work uh, is exceptional and results in many, uh, not just hundreds or thousands, but millions of people actually being able to do things with computers that they thought was previously impossible. And that, that for me started when I was, uh, when I was young and uh, carries through uh, to this day. And it's, it's an honor to have been a part of building a really, uh, one of these companies that has a product that, that makes a difference in the world. Um, so, you know, another thing that's really important to Mike, uh, other uh, than building things that matter in the world, is people. And the fact that we're all here today, and we all have these stories, um, the, the Postgres team was, you know, amazing, right? Like, what a, what a blast, what a lot of fun. Um, and it's always fun with Mike, no matter what. 
And I, I think in, in many ways, Mike is radically misunderstood. Um, there are a lot of people, especially business people out there in the world, um, that come to me all the time. And uh, they say, well, how can you work with Mike Stonebreaker? He's impossible. <laughs> like, what's wrong with that guy? And um, I, I think that, uh, you know, there's a radical misunderstanding. A lot of these business people are taking their own values, where they care a lot about money, um, and they don't really care uh, whether or not people uh, can use the systems or the software that they're involved in building. And they're projecting those things onto Mike. And so that gruff exterior hides uh, core fundamental primary motivations uh, that are actually good in the world. And that was my experience with Mike when we started Vertica. That uh, uh, he, f he first came to me and, and suggested I was living in Portsmouth at the time, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and commuting down to Cambridge. And uh, after Joe Tango, where's Joe? Is he here? Still? No. Uh, Joe introduced uh, Mike and I. Uh, uh, it a uh, uh, boondoggle actually through our wives. Um, so, so we had both been invited to this VC boondoggle. And uh, my wife Amy and Mike's wife Beth met and got along. And then I think Beth went to Mike and said something that was essentially like, uh, Amy and I really get along, and so you and Mike have to start a company together. <laughs> and... Uh, Mike at the time was working on uh, uh, what became uh, Vertica, which started off as C-Store, along with Sam and Mitch and Stan and Dave and a whole bunch of other phenomenal uh, uh, folks that were uh, working on the academic project. And one of the first things that Mike insisted that I do was go out to Brandeis and have a meeting in Mitch's office uh, and uh, sit down and uh, have a discussion to see whether or not I could get along uh, with uh, the, the academics. And uh, it was a fascinating meeting because they were both asking me questions to figure out whether I was a money-hungry, bag-of-cash kind of a thing. They were fresh off of their stream-based project, so seeing Stan slide actually kind of makes sense now, right? They were trying to figure out, oh, are you the bag-of-cash guy? And um, uh, but coming out of that meeting, I had this really distinct impression that um, we were, that Mike had started the process of building yet another team. And uh, I didn't know him well enough to know then that this is something that he had done over and over and over again throughout his entire career. But um, I was the recipient of, uh, you know, the Stonebreaker team building process. And, um, you know, every organizational development professional in the, in the world would probably cringe um, but uh, the things that Mike does in building teams is, is absolutely exemplary. And it's the way that you should do things. So when Mike came to me and pitched me on, on starting Vertica with him, he said, listen, you don't have to do this, in, uh, do, do this commute to Boston all the time. I live in New Hampshire. You live in New Hampshire. Let's just start a company in New Hampshire, and we'll stay up there, and it'll all be nice. And, of course, at the time, I was going to be, yeah, but you work at MIT like, how is this going to happen? I said, oh, no, I'm just going to trust them, see what happened. So about three months into the project, Mike says, well, you know, it's really hard to recruit people in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, in New Hampshire so maybe we should go up and recruit out of the DEC RDB team up in, uh, up in uh, New, uh, uh, Nashua. So let's locate the company in Andover. And so it felt like a really kind of a major compromise. But, you know, you know in Mike fashion, you know, I, I kind of describe how he, how he said this. But he, what he basically said is something like, we're going to put the company in Andover, Massachusetts. <laughs> so I just agreed and went along with it. Then uh, about, uh, we're, we're, we go about raising money. And we're, uh, Ray Lane, who's one of our, one of our early investors uh, from Kleiner Perkins, uh, happened to be over at the offices of EMC, and we walk in, and uh, we're, we're talking to Joe Tucci, who's the CEO of EMC, and Ray Lane grabs Mike, and he, you know, brings him up to Joe, and he says, Joe, you got to talk to Mike Stonebreaker. This is the only guy in the entire database industry that actually tells the truth. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, like, wait a minute, this is the guy that just told me we're going to have a company in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. <laughs> is not true. But, uh, uh, but whenever, whenever Mike uh, bends the truth a little bit, it's almost always because he's trying to satisfy these fundamentally good primary motivations, and it's, uh, it's never about money. 
Um, one of the other it really funny, it's been great listening to all the stories this morning. One of the other great stories I have is uh, when uh, Kleiner Perkins invested in, in Vertica early on, uh, it was really at the behest of, of Jerry Held, who had obviously known Mike from way back in the day. One of our first due diligence calls uh, that these venture folks like to have, uh, Jerry and Ray Lane and I are out in California. Ray Lane's the guy who used to run Oracle, so he was kind of like looking to beat, beat up on on Larry Ellison or something. And uh, so Jerry and, and Ray and I are out in California at Kleiner. Mike's on the phone in Lake Winnipesaukee probably or somewhere else. And so we sit down and Mike clearly hadn't processed kind of what was going on in this meeting and he just drops into his pitch. And the first thing out of his brain is like, well, I'm Mike Stonebreaker. I'm the guy that wrote Ingress way back in the 1970s. And Jerry's sitting there and Jerry's like, Hey, I'm the guy that wrote the code. That guy never wrote a line of code. What's going on here? And he looks at me like, really? And Mike, of course, just continues to go on and talk about how great column stores are and how wonderful the world's going to be without Oracle. Um, <laughs> it was really amazing. Then, you know, uh, other things that happened as we were go went through the process of starting Vertic, and I'm going to try really hard not to repeat um, you know, the kind of anecdotes that have been described before. But uh, Mike really early on had this uh, meeting with Jim Gray, uh, God rest his soul, and uh, Mike came back to me and, and one, what he said was, was basically, well, I took th Jim through all, he read the paper and, and I took him through everything we're planning to do and he thinks that we can't do about half of the things that we can do or that we've said we want to do. And I'm like, well, geez, you know, Mike, maybe we should sort of like, you know, rein it in a little bit. Like, are you sure you really want to do that? Maybe, maybe, maybe he, Jim's right. You know, the guy does kind of know what he's talking about. And Mike's like, no, screw him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. We're going to do all that and three times more. And so uh, irrationally, I went in and said, great, let's go raise 15 million bucks. Let's go. Um, one of the things that uh, we did early on, and it was mentioned, uh, you know, Mike has this sort of, uh, you know, uh, a tendency to want to create lots of access to the, uh, the stuff that he works on. And so we had this idea really early on at Vertica, we had to decide if we were going to open source the code, and we decided not to for a whole bunch of reasons. But um, one of the things we did believe in was uh, what we call open access, that it was going to be really, ultimately it was going to be really easy for lots of people to get our code. And so, um, you know, we, we, we couldn't pull that off in the early days, but over time, uh, it became possible. And Mike and I together recruited a guy named Colin Mahoney who runs Vertica now. And one of the things that I'm most proud of is, you know, I sat down with Colin for breakfast earlier this week, and uh, Colin uh, told me that um, the, the quantity of downloads of Vertica's community edition uh, is now measured in the hundreds of thousands. Uh, and... Uh, that we've, you know, delivered on that promise. And uh, there were uh, a lot of, you know, sort of ups and downs as there are in every startup. But um, when push comes to shove, um, I'm really proud of the fact that we built a great product and that we've now made that product available to lots and lots of people. Um, and um, again, the money really was just a tool uh, to build something that mattered in the world. Uh, one of the amazing dynamics that went on at Vertica that, that was really uh, uh, cool to watch was when Dave came out for the sabbatical, as he mentioned earlier, um, Mike had been basically taking the paper and kind of like telling everybody what they were going to do. And we had all these great engineers that were doing this stuff. And Dave comes in and, like, and I don't think anybody kind of sees it. Dave kind of says, yeah, no, I don't think we're going to do that. Like, let's stop. And he starts going through methodically, one by one by one, all these great ideas that Mike had had and figuring out how we were going to actually map that to real code. And it, it was cool to watch the two of them work together. Um, clearly, the level of trust was, was exceptional. And um, again, it was clear to me that when we were building that product, when we were building something that uh, was significant and new, that uh, a part of the magic was these really grand ambitions and this great vision that Mike had um, and the attention to detail and the discipline that they've provided. And Mike has a real penchant for doing that, bringing people together uh, uh, around him uh, in order to make sure that uh, great things get built um, and that uh, the world results from all the time, energy, and investment that we make in terms of engineering these products. No, I don't think so. I think it was more everybody else. Though, well, it was, it was a really great dynamic. And again, uh, it, was really, uh, it was really fun to watch. 
Um, so that being said, I remember the day at Vertica when we got select to work. Um, that was a real <laughs> achievement. Um, we had actually sold a little bit of software before then, although we were really uh, not too much, so we prided ourselves on satisfying our customers. And um, uh, this, this whole dynamic that went on with the NoSQL community was really fascinating, and it's come full circle. The latest release of Vertica has this feature called Flex in it now, where um, basically you can access the Vertica system through JSON. And so all this sort of uh, hyperbole that goes on about SQL and NoSQL and object versus relational, um, ultimately at the end of the day, there are users out there that don't really care about any of this stuff. And it's really about building great systems that behave in ways that satisfy users. And sometimes the database community, I think, can get sort of insular in trying to uh, compare and contrast these various differences between these systems. Um, but Mike has a really unique ability to cut through that and help design and, and build systems that um, actually make a difference for, for users. And um, that, that's something that, as his business partner, I, I appreciate because uh, the, the marriage of business and technology together really depends on, uh, first and foremost, on great engineering and building new stuff that, that, that makes a difference in the world. So, um, you know, the, the number of folks that were involved in, in Vertica is, again, sort of a testament to, to Mike's ability to bring great people together. There are a whole bunch of folks here, uh, from uh, Dimitri to, to Min Zhao uh, to Chuck Bear uh, and uh, Shilpa Lawande, who was here earlier, Colin Mahoney, Nabil Hechem, uh, Sam, Mitch, uh, and, and Stan. Um, you know, just amazing memories and incredible contribution from everybody involved. Our good friend JR, who, who Stan mentioned earlier, um, was really critical to the whole project. And again, you know, the, the, the dozens and dozens, hundreds of people really involved in building that system uh, and bringing it to market were the result of Mike's energy, enthusiasm, and passion uh, that he invested in the project. And I was really uh, lucky and blessed to, to be a part of uh, bringing that system into the world. So, uh, you know, just to wrap up, I, I, you know, the, the Mike and I now have worked on five or so different projects here in New England. Um, the statement that Sam made earlier in terms of Mike as an inspiration to the entrepreneurial community in Boston um, is, is a radical understatement. The pace that Mike has set for us here in Boston with regards to doing new startups uh, is extreme. The expectations that he has are the kinds of expectations that uh, everyone in Silicon Valley has of themselves every single day. He's brought some of that West Coast mojo here to Boston, and it's radically transformed my career uh, and in and, and, and my life, and, and I really, really appreciate that. I think we need more of this in Boston. And the thing that's so remarkable is he's doing it at 70 years old. Um, whereas, uh, you know, like, I, I, you know, I, I just hope I'm, you know, alive and walking around at your age, Mike. I mean, it's really <laughs> fantastic. Um, and so, I, you know, there, there's been so, so much that's been said. Um, and again, I've gotten through this without uh, shedding a tear. But uh, in, in my heart, uh, there's no one in my professional life and, uh, uh, and no one in my career that, um, that I appreciate more uh, than, than you. Um, you're, you're an amazing friend and um, a tremendous business partner, and, uh, and I really love you. So thank you. Um, thank you, Mike. I, I also, I, I really, uh, more, more than Mike, I really owe uh, all, everything that's happened with us and our partnership to, to Beth. And, um, <laughs> You know, at the core, you know, uh, uh, you know anyone uh, that, that, that works as hard as Mike does um, can't do so and isn't capable of doing so without an amazing uh, spouse. And uh, Beth, thank you uh, for everything you've done for Mike over the years. Thank you for being a part of every startup and all the contribution that you've made to all the people in this room and everyone else that he's touched. Thank you. Thank you.